Welcome to Getting Started with Your Virtualis System. In this video user manual, we will take a closer look at your system and go step-by-step -step to get you started using Virtualis. The chapter guide outlines different sections discussed in this video user manual. Chapter one outlines the technical considerations for use, including hardware and software. In chapter two, we'll discuss setting up your Virtualis system. Even if your system has already been set up, this chapter will review the basics of the setup and provide troubleshooting information that even seasoned users will find helpful. Chapter three discusses the clinical considerations for using virtual reality. This includes precautions, contraindications, and recommendations for using VR with different clinical populations. In chapter four, we will discover the patient manager and review the basic workflow of your Virtualis software. Let's begin with the technical considerations, and we'll start with the hardware. Your Virtualis hardware includes the computer cart in which the following items are attached. Your USB hub is a four port USB hub that is typically attached to the computer tower. On the left-hand side of your system, where the virtual reality headset is, you'll find the link box. This link box connects your virtual reality headset with the computer. As you can see, there's a small blue button to turn on and off the link box. Once this is turned on, there's no need to turn this item off. This will allow the virtual reality headset to turn on and off with your computer. On the back of the computer tower, behind the computer monitor, you'll find the storage basket. Coming up, we'll discuss the accessories that are held within this storage basket. And of course, your virtual reality headset. This device brings us a head-mounted display of the virtual environment. So during this presentation and clinical training, you may hear the term head-mounted display as a term used for your virtual reality headset. Start with the headset. And the first thing I want to bring your attention to are the easy to clean cushions. These cushions are listed, are, are around the eyes of the headset, as well as the ears of the headphones and the back of the device. These virtual reality cover cushions can be wiped with any cleaning supply you currently use in your clinic. At the top of the headset, is the adjustable head strap. While this can be easily removed and hand washed, we recommend simply using a hair bonnet to keep a layer, a barrier protective layer between the patient's head and your headset. The virtual reality lenses seen here at the front of the headset typically do not see a lot of dust and dirt. However, if there is a smudge or a smear, the manufacturer recommends using your microfiber cleaning cloth. To use this cleaning equipment, begin from the center of the lens and work your way out to the edges in a circular motion. On the front of your virtual reality headset, is our leap motion device. This device is primarily used for the mirror and the mirror and ball rehabilitation modules. If it's not in use, 
you can simply unplug the leap motion from the headset. It's also very easy to remove this device from the headset by sliding it off in a horizontal manner. Oftentimes, patients like to grab the front of the headset to adjust it toward their eyes. And in doing so, they can leave smears and fingerprints on the front of the leap motion device. So if that occurs, you can again simply use that microfiber cleaning cloth to remove that. As we discuss your hardware, Two pieces of equipment that are critical to using Virtualis in your clinic are our base stations. These devices can be set up on tripods or mounted on the wall. When we look at this base station, this is what detects the headset in your physical environment, which brings the patient into the virtual environment. These base stations are fairly fragile, and if they fall to the ground, they can become damaged. So while I recommend that your system is set up with tripods initially, once you understand where you feel comfortable using your Virtualis station in your clinic, I recommend that they be mounted on the wall. The system came with wall mounts, as you can see. And uh, once you have decided exactly where you like to use your Virtualis system, you can simply mount the wall mounts onto the wall, higher than your tallest patient, and then simply screw the base station onto the wall mount you'll see that with our setup, we want the base station to be angled diagonal from one another. That means that typically your computer cart, wherever it's stationed in your facility, the base station should be just behind and off to the side. And then the second base station should be somewhere diagonally across the room. That allows us full capability for the patient to move around the room. When the base stations are set up, they should be angled about 30 to 45 degrees toward the floor. You can see in the base station on the center, we have an indication light that tells us what is happening with our base stations. If they are not connected, that indication light will be white or blue. When the base stations are connected and plugged in and they can be seen through the Steam VR software and they're recognizing one another and the headset, that indication light turns green. If your system is not working and you notice that the base station light is red, that would indicate that something is wrong with the base station and you should reach out to technical support. Other physical considerations for setting up your system, especially these base stations, is the room size. We recommend the room be no larger than 23 by 23 feet. The room can certainly be smaller than that, but the base station coverage will, that will be the maximum distance for the base station coverage. Moving on with our hardware, we'll next talk about our accessory devices. You should have two controllers, otherwise called hand controllers, because these are held within the client's hands. You should also have two trackers. These trackers can be used to track the headset and speed of movement. We'll talk about that later. 
you should also see an Xbox controller. All of the accessory devices fit in the storage basket at the back of your system to keep them organized. Other accessory devices in that storage basket are the head tracker in which the tracker can be attached to the headband. There's also a computer mount and you can see better on this picture where the device can be fastened, uh, the tracker can be fastened to this device. The computer mount sits at the top of the computer screen secured by, secured to the computer monitor. If your system has a touch screen, it's important not to screw the clamp too tightly onto the front of the monitor. During the dynamic visual acuity test, we will be using the computer mounted tracker as well as the headband mounted head tracker. Other devices that the trackers can be attached to are called track straps. You should find short and extra large long trackers in your accessory basket. The track strap allows us to use the tracker in replacement of the controller for many of our rehabilitation modules. Another piece of hardware that you should see with your system is the foot switch. This is also used for dynamic visual acuity testing. The Thrustmaster steering wheel is the device used for our car simulation and driver modules. This device plugs into the wall as well as to the USB hub. So that four station hub, if used, if set up, would see two tracker USB dongles the Xbox USB dongle, as well as the Thrustmaster dongle. When the device is plugged in, your USB hub lights up in a bright blue to indicate that these ports are turned on. When the Thrustmaster is on, each time it recognizes that it's been turned on, the steering wheel will run a calibration. This is not necessary unless you plan to use that Thrustmaster directly in a treatment session. So our recommendation is to either turn that USB dongle port off and you can see that bright blue dulls out. The other option is to simply unplug the USB dongle from the USB port. Next, we will talk about your Virtualis software. Before we talk directly about Virtualis software, I want to bring your attention to Steam VR. This software system is installed onto your computer and it links the hardware we just discussed to your Virtualis software. You'll see that the Virtualis software icon, our patient manager icon, is titled Guest Gone Patient, version two. This patient manager software is what will bring us into our patient manager. We'll talk a little bit more about the significance of SteamVR in our next section.